Well, we have, uh, we've covered a lot of ground over the past several weeks here in this, uh, this series as we've uh, uh, basically been inspecting the foundations of our faith in Christ. And so far we've seen, uh, we began by looking at uh, the overarching story that God has written, uh, the story of the creation of the world, the fall, the redemption brought about by Jesus Christ and the promised restoration. That was followed with two weeks on God's word for our lives and how it forms us and and directs us in our faith. Uh, We made sure following that to cover uh, worship, this gathering of believers, as we took a look at its who, what, where, how, and why. Then we broke down the things that we see in worship, these two common elements of the sacraments of of baptism, of the water and the word, and also of the Lord's Supper where Jesus' body and blood regularly offers us the forgiveness of our sins. And now this week, we take all of these foundations and understandings that we've come to to, uh, glean over the past weeks, and we talk about how we take that out of our own lives and share that with others, as is our mission as Christians. It turns out this is actually a pretty simple thing once you have the foundations, the building blocks in place. I'd like to start then by uh, going back to uh, a a story of a restaurant uh, uh, we visited, my wife and I here back uh, uh, in my last year of seminary, and we got a chance to take a quick trip to, uh, to Nashville, actually. And uh, we went to, so one thing we like to do when we go to new places especially is uh, find kind of the, the cool restaurant of the area and try a couple of those. And this one we found in Nashville was called The Pharmacy, okay? You can already tell it's kind of a cool place based on the name. And uh, it was actually uh, a converted uh, old school pharmacy, so kind of a cool building. And uh, uh, they had uh, these really great handmade, house-made sodas and really good burgers and fries and you name name it, a great place to eat. Uh, and we, we liked it so much that uh, actually a couple of years ago when we took a road trip through that part of the, uh, the country, we made sure we took a day to stop in Nashville to go back to that very restaurant because it's so high on our list for good restaurants. I was also cool uh, back a little bit ago. Somebody said they were going to Nashville and uh, we had the opportunity to tell them about this restaurant and say, hey, you should make sure you go to the pharmacy. And it's cool to be able to share uh, experiences and uh, places you've discovered like that with other people, right? Well, I'd like you to take that story of this, this restaurant and hold on to that uh, because we'll come back to it and you'll see uh, why that story is actually a good illustration for what we're talking about today. Uh, before we get to the rest of that story, I want to go to our biblical story for the day from 2 Kings 7. Uh, It's a little bit of an obscure story, granted, but it's also a really good one to illustrate this idea of mission. So first, let me set the stage for the story, just to kind of give you the the understanding of what what the world, what's going on in the world at this time. Uh, The king of Israel is this guy named Jehoram, and uh, the king of Syria, who they're referred to as the Arameans in the story, they are attacking. And basically the way they're doing this is this opposing army has set up a blockade and they are not allowing food or supplies or anything to get into this city. You can imagine the situation that's going on. The whole nation is in famine. There's no food. There's there's no resources. And the little bit of food that is available is so expensive, nobody can afford it except for the very wealthy. In fact, we're told just a chapter earlier that donkey meat, which is a cheap meat, costs $650 a portion. This is inflation to the max. Things are bad. Things are dire. People are desperate. And it's in this context that we meet some lepers. Lepers were the lowest of the low. They had this highly contagious disease that would eventually kill them. And they're just trying to survive. So here's how the story begins. There were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, well, the famine is there and we will die. And if we stay here, 
we will die. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They can't go into the city. That's pretty normal because they're outcasts. They have a disease. So they've accepted their estrangement, but they have not accepted that they're just going to starve to death. It's actually a pretty interesting tidbit because though lepers would eventually die from this disease, younger than everybody else, they still don't want to die any sooner than they have to. And they uncover this fundamental human truth of the desire of most to live at all costs. This is actually part of the reason our mission as Christians is important, and we'll, we'll get to that. And so the lepers make this decision. They say, okay, well, we can't go into the city, we can't stay here, so let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then, well, our troubles are over. If you can't beat them, join them is basically their motto. So they go into this enemy camp to find some food. They go at dusk. That's an important detail because if they're lepers, they don't want anybody in the camp to see it. So at dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. They're hoping nobody is going to notice this disease and they're going to be able to at least find some sustenance, something to get them by. But then the story takes a turn. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army, so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. What an incredible turn of events. God has made this happen, that the, this opposing army would basically hear, in their, their imaginations would get the best of them, and they run. This is going to fix everything. Prices are going to come down. People are going to have food again and safety. What seems impossible is now possible. And so here's what the men do. The men with leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold, and clothes. They went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. This is amazing. They've discovered basically the greatest treasure anybody could discover in a, in, in a land of scarcity and famine. If you were starving to death, this is exactly what you would hope to find. But these guys' first reaction is to just hoard it, hide it, take it for themselves, make sure it was just them that had this gift. But everyone else is starving too. And so the lepers have to make a choice. Will they continue to just keep all this food and, and plenty for themselves or will they share it in the same, with others in the same situation? Basically, you could say these guys have been saved from sooner death. Will they help save others from the same? Then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. These guys have some amazing news they can share with the people of the city. And they realize they just can't keep it to themselves. They need to share it with others. And suddenly, a somewhat obscure story gets very real for you and me. Because we too have some good news. We have amazing news. There is really no greater treasure for the world than this news that we have. People of our world, too, are starving to death in a spiritual way because they lack spiritual food. Scripture tells us that sin ultimately leads to eternal death without the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. The 
good food of Jesus' holy word. Just like these lepers then, if you have good news to share, you've got to share it with others. Now I can imagine it's often scary to share it. I can imagine for these guys that they probably weren't uh, excited about having to go with their disease and talk to other people or share this news. Maybe they were ridiculed. Maybe people thought they were weird. Maybe people think the same when we share our beliefs. But if you keep this good news for yourself, like the lepers, what you're doing is not right. So we've got to share this good news about Jesus. And going back to that story that, that uh, I told of this restaurant that uh, we were able to, to, uh, to go to, it was cool to be able to share that tidbit with others. In fact, last night, it was cool again to have a few people say, hey, I'm going to Nashville or I've been there. I'm going to go check out that restaurant. It's always fun when you can share a good experience or something good with someone else. And you don't hesitate to do so because it's not like the restaurant's short on food or they're going to close or something because you shared it with somebody. No, it's, there's plenty for everyone. That's one of the cool things about this good news that we have as well. It is for everyone. It's not just for us. The lepers, too, they don't just get food. They get silver and gold and clothes. There's plenty for everyone. There are supplies here to begin to restore and save this nation. God's good news is the same. It is an abundant wealth of grace and salvation and hope the same things that we have come to understand that we get to share with others because it's not a scarce resource. It is for all people. The other side of this too, though, is that sharing the good news is we do this because people matter. When you share something good that has happened to you or a place you visited, you do so because you want that other person to share in it as well. You care about them. Well, the lepers, they decide to care as well because they don't want others to die. Maybe they even had some friends in the city and they realized, man, we, we've got to help them out. Well, those who don't have the good news about Jesus, Scripture tells us they will die eternally from sin. And so we need to share that good news with them so that no one experiences eternal death. So that all can believe like we do. So that all can experience, as Jesus describes in John 10, life and life to the full, not just mediocre life. And because that's true, because people matter, because it's not a scarce resource it's actually a fun thing to share this good news with others. Now I know sometimes it's a scary thing to t think about sharing that with somebody else. You might offend them. How will they take it? You don't know. But when you think about it, it's actually a fun thing to do as well. Because when somebody gets it, when somebody understands the good news, when they see their sin and have the opportunity to come and receive forgiveness and hope for the future, that's a great feeling. When the Holy Spirit has worked on somebody else, has used you as an instrument, what a blessing that is to see how God has used you. Just like sharing a great restaurant with somebody else, it's a great feeling when they get to share in that as well. When they come back and say, man, that was a great place. Likewise for us, when we share the good news in Luke 15, there is rejoicing over one sinner who repents. There is rejoicing for us when God uses us to do that in someone else's life. And really, that's, that's the goal. It's nothing fancy. It's simply that all would come to know this forgiveness that they have and that they would confess their sins. That nobody would 
have to die as a consequence for their sin. That all people would believe in Jesus so that they can share in this forgiveness through Jesus' death and this new life eternal through Jesus' resurrection. That truly is the best news you could possibly have to share with someone else. As the lepers put it, this is a day of good news and we are keeping it for ourselves. Let's go at once and tell someone about it. And so today, let us together celebrate this good news that we hear, that we have together, and may we tell about it as well with great excitement and joy. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Gracious God, when we have good news to share, it's hard to contain uh, sharing that good news with somebody else. To call a friend, to tell them about it, to uh, go and, and, and rejoice with somebody. Lord, teach us to do the same, that uh, uh, through our faith, through the good news we have, that we've been uh, saved and forgiven and given hope, that we would share that with others with great excitement and joy through that power you give us of the Holy Spirit. And we pray in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has given us this good news. Amen.